In this video, we're going to be looking at span of vectors and subspaces. Let's consider this question we have here. I have two vectors, v1 and v2, in some vector space v. If h is the span of v1 and v2, is h a subspace of v? In our last video, we learned how to check whether a subset of v is a subspace. Remember, there are three conditions to check. The first condition is, is the zero vector in h? If you remember, the span of a set of vectors is the collection of linear combinations of those vectors. So h consists of vectors that look like some constant c1 times v1 plus some constant c2 times v2. We can choose c1 to be 0 and choose c2 to be 0, and the resulting linear combination is the zero vector. So that tells me that the zero vector is in h. The second condition that we need to check is whether h is closed under addition. To show this, we want to start with two arbitrary elements in h and check that their sum is also in h. So let's take one arbitrary linear combination, a1, v1, plus a2, v2. And let's take another arbitrary linear combination, b1, v1, plus b2, v2. Now their sum can be written as a1 plus b1 v1, when we group terms together, plus a2 plus b2 v2. a1 plus b1 is just some scalar, and a2 plus b2 is another scalar. So the sum is just a linear combination of v1 and v2. Therefore, it's an h. So we've checked that h is closed under addition third property to check is that h is closed under scalar multiplication. To check this, I want to take an arbitrary scalar and an arbitrary vector in h and see if that product is in h. So let's take the arbitrary scalar c and the arbitrary vector in h, a1 v1 plus a2 v2. This product is c a1 v1 plus c a2 v2. Again, notice that ca1 is just a scalar and ca2 is just another scalar. So this product is a linear combination of v1 and v2, therefore it's an h. And that confirms that h is closed under scalar multiplication. So since h has all three of these conditions, we can conclude that h is a subspace of v. So we've shown that the span of any two vectors in V forms a subspace of V. In fact, we can do this with any number of vectors. And this gives us the following theorem. If V1 through Vn are vectors in a vector space V, then the span of those vectors is a subspace of V. This is going to be useful for us because if we can write a set as a span of a collection of vectors, then we automatically know that that set is a subspace. Let's look at some examples. In our first example here, we have vectors in R2. And H is the collection of vectors of the form A, 2A. We can get an idea of what sort of vectors are in H by plugging in various values for A. For example, if I plug in A equals 1, I get the vector 1, 2. If I plug in A equals 2, I get 2, 4. If I plug in A equals, say, negative 3, I get negative 3, negative 6. And in general, we have vectors of the form a to a. But notice that this vector can be written as a times the vector 1, 2. Since this a here can be any real number, we can think of h as the span of the vector 1, 2, or all scalar multiples of the vector 1, 2. From our previous theorem, we can conclude that h is a subspace of R2. In our next example here, we are working in R3, and h is the set of vectors of the form a minus b, 2b plus 3c, and 3a plus b minus c, where a, b, and c can be any real numbers. An arbitrary element in h is of the form a minus b, 2b plus 3c, and 3a plus b minus c. Now we can break this apart just like when we write vectors in parametric vector form. Here the parameters are a, b, and c. 
So this expression can be written as a 0 and 3a plus negative b, 2b, and b, and lastly plus 0, 3c, and minus c. Factoring out the a from the first vector, I have a times 1, 0, 3 plus b times negative 1, 2, 1 plus c times 0, 3, negative 1. Now since a, b, and c can be any real numbers, we can think about h as the span of the vectors 1, 0, 3, negative 1, 2, 1, and lastly 0, 3, negative 1. And since h is the span of a collection of vectors, from our theorem we can conclude that h is a subspace of R3. Let's look at one last example. So here we're still in R3, and h here is the collection of vectors of the form 2a plus b, 1, negative a plus 5b, where a and b are any real numbers. An arbitrary vector of h is going to have the form 2a plus b, 1, and negative a plus 5b. Again, we can split this up into a vector that only contains a's, so we have 2a, 0, and negative a, a vector that only has b's, b, 0, and 5b, and then we have a vector that doesn't have any variables at all, the vector 0, 1, 0. We can factor the a out of the first vector to get a times 2, 0, negative 1. Factor the b out of the second vector to get b times 1, 0, 5. And then we're still left with 0, 1, 0. Now you might think that we can write h as the span of 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 5, and 0, 1, 0. But that's not quite right. We can't get every linear combination of these three vectors. The weight for the vector 0, 1, 0 is always stuck at 1 so we don't have any other scalar multiples of it. Therefore, h cannot be written as a span of vectors. In fact, h is not a subspace of R3 because the middle entry is always 1, so the 0 vector is not in h. So again, h is not a subspace of R3. That's it for now. Next time we'll talk about linear transformations, null spaces, and column spaces.